Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel. Today, we're going to take a, another look at rigging, and this specific rigging event is going to be on a 75 Traveler. Now, the rigging tools can be called rigging tools, throw boards, but what they do is they provide a reference to let you know how far your control surfaces can move, and that determines the rigging of the aircraft. So stay tuned for more information. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So let's take a look at the rigging we did on that 75 Traveler yesterday. And here's Matt, what we're doing here is the first thing you want to do in rigging is you take your rigging tools and you go through the whole aircraft and you measure where they are, like where are the flaps in the up position left and right? Where are they in the down position left and right? What kind of swing do you have on the ailerons? Then you go back to the rudder and you check the throw on the rudder. You do the same thing with the elevator. And then you can also uh, measure the trim. But once you've done that, now you have all the numbers on the airplane so that you now know where the airplane is. And based upon those numbers, it will give you some information of how the airplane should be flying. In this particular case, uh, we were measuring and we found that there was a one degree difference, which is the limit of the type certificate for the flaps. One flap was further down, which would make the airplane want to roll in one direction. In this case, it was wanted to roll to the left because of the flap set. Then the rudder was, the trim tab was to the left to make the airplane go to the right to offset the roll from the left of the aileron. But the ball was about half out. So anyway, we're measuring everything on the airplane so that now we know where we are and then once you have the baseline measurements of the aircraft uh, in your hand and on paper then you can begin the process of adjusting them if your elevators are out you go and adjust for the elevators we're going to be on this airplane one flap would have to be picked up to match the other flaps so they're out there at the same position both top and bottom make sure the ailerons have the correct flow flow and then with the neutral blocks in you want to make sure that your elevator is at neutral and the whole idea of measuring and rigging an airplane with adjustments is that you would like all the control surfaces to be right in line with the airflow this gives you the minimum amount of drag on the airframe which again gives you the maximum amount of speed and as we've always said and I'll say it again rigging your airplane takes about four hours but once you get your airplane rigged properly that's all the speed you're going to get out of it in its current configuration it gives you a good baseline and i've heard of people who go i want my airplane to go faster and i go let's rig it to find out where we are no 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 i want to go with the 160 horsepower i want a power flow i want to get the sensage propeller i just want to go faster and then they do all of that and they're only a knot or two faster because they have all the drag on the airplane case in point 75 traveler again uh, a few years ago the gentleman bought it it was a 104 knot airplane all the time then he went with 160 horsepower and he had a 104 knot airplane then he wanted to add electronic ignition he did 104 knot airplane since propeller 104 knot airplane power flow 104 knot airplane he brought the airplane to us we measured it he was way out everywhere. We rigged that airplane, and when he went home, it was at 128 knots. So he picked up 24 knots on his airplane just by being that. Now, it was a well out of rig airplane, but my personal traveler wasn't that badly rigged. But when I rigged it, I gained 14 knots. And, you know, just making some adjustments, you can pick up four or five knots fairly quickly. So anyway, that's the purpose of rigging so that your airplane moves through the air with the least amount of drag. And then once you have all those numbers, you've got your baseline and it's not that hard to do. But anyway, we wanted to throw this video out there of us using the rigging tools. Now they're called rigging tools. They're called throw boards, uh, control surface throw boards. They have a variety of names depending upon who you talk to. And the nice thing about the tools is the tools register by the factory based upon the um, based upon the airframe main structures like the wing. Your wing roots that people use to adjust their flaps so that they're neutral with the wing root, they go, you know, I adjusted my flaps to match the pilot side, but the co-pilot side doesn't match. The wing roots 
there is no guarantee that those wing roots were put on the airplane exactly level from side to side. So anyway, that's why you want to use the rigging tools. It gives you a good baseline reference of what you're measuring and you're measuring it correctly. Yes, they make digital protractors. You can put on them and move them around. But without that baseline registration against the main airframe, you're never going to dial them in as, as finely. You're not going to get a precision rigging of this. But anyway, we hope you find all of this uh, interesting to look at. And again, it only takes about four hours to completely measure the airplane and completely rig it. It's not that hard because we are fortunate all of our controls they're right there in the hell hole and as matt will be happy to tell you there's a reason why they call it the hell hole under the back seat in the four place airplanes but take a look at us measuring the airplane and getting it all ready to go and if your airplane has never been measured think about coming to event we always have the rigging tools we'll be happy to measure your airplane for you as well as we can take the amoc tool and check for compliance there a lot of people are missing that one lately but it's a good thing to do your airplane and again it's the cheapest speed you will ever get and as you saw on the traveler we actually used that rigging tool for the elevator it was specially made for the traveler and as you can see it would only fit on a traveler uh, to measure how the elevator moves both up and down and uh, that's why we showed all these and so it's a good thing when you have rigging tools they are available there are a lot of sets out there Fletcher has a set that they rig but again I would recommend that you all go out there and get your airplanes checked again it's the cheapest speed you will ever get and um, that makes your airplane more fun to fly it means you go farther on gas it makes you a more frugal grum grumman owner in effect so let's take a look at uh, the, the final measurements on this airplane and then I will let you go back to your day. And there's nothing complicated about the actual rigging of changing all the turnbuckles. It's explained very easily and in a logical manner in the maintenance manuals for both the ailerons, the elevators, the flaps, everything. So ladies and gentlemen, you've watched us rig this airplane we have other videos on rigging but we hope you found all this information useful and informative like to thanks for watching and have a good day flying your grumman and in addition there's a little treat about three o'clock in the morning when i'm doing web work and other stuff Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all please enjoy.